Welcome back everyone to the Bucks County Conservation District's Backyard Vegetable Gardening web series. Last week we went over all the information you need to understand the invasive spotted lanternfly as well as identify them during each of their life phases. Today I'm going to show you two different types of traps you can install in your backyard that are excellent for catching spotted lanternfly nymphs. The first type of trap is called tree banding. Tree banding is an easy and inexpensive way to trap spotted lanternfly nymphs. Many conservation districts are supplying tree bands for homeowners, but there are also tons of options you can buy commercially. It's easiest if you have someone to help you wrap the band around the tree, keeping it around chest height and putting the stickiest side outward. Once you wrap it all the way around, you can use a box cutter or scissors to cut the band. Your fingers or the scissors might stick to the band, so you can use oil to help stop it from sticking. Now that your band is on the tree, you want to replace it about once a week. If it fills with spotted lantern fly quickly, then you definitely want to replace it sooner, but don't wait much longer than one week as it can cause some damage to the tree. When removing it, simply roll the band in on itself, keeping all of the spotted lantern flies on the inside. You will notice how trapped moisture affects the tree under the band, which is why it is so important to remove them frequently. When putting on a new band, either put it above or below where the previous band was to avoid further damage. It's best to start applying tree bands in early May as the eggs begin to hatch. You can keep replacing the bands throughout the season until you are no longer catching any spotted lanternfly nymphs. Around July, they will become adults and grow wings, which means these tree bands are no longer as effective. Once this happens, stop putting tree bands on to avoid unnecessary damage to the tree as well as avoid some really bad bycatch. A large concern over the use of sticky bands is accidentally catching small mammals, birds, and lizards. There are two main ways to prevent this bycatch. The first is simply reducing the width of the tree bands. You can do this by cutting commercial bands in half or thirds. As you can see, we did that to ours. Uh, this spool specifically is cut in half. The second option in preventing bycatch is putting a type of covering such as chicken wire over the tree bands to prevent larger animals from getting stuck. When attaching the chicken wire, you can staple it to the tree. I don't recommend this because you have to remove it and staple it again each time you change out the band, so this can cause a lot of damage to the tree. Instead, you can just use some extra wire to tie the ends together. Lastly are circle traps. This technique was created by Rachel Berge, a middle school student from Harleysville. Her and her family were using sticky bands on their trees when they noticed a large amount of bycatch. The trap that she created funnels the climbing nymphs into a bag where they can't escape and die within a few days. This great technique can be built at home easily with a couple supplies you can find around your house. You will need the following supplies to make your circle trap at home. The great thing about this DIY is you can use so many different materials and tools to make it, so there's no one right way to do it. As you'll see later, there were certain things that I didn't have, so I had to improvise, but I still ended up making the trap successfully. First, you need to cut the tops off of both plastic milk jugs, as shown here using a box cutter. Just make sure to be careful with the sharp plastic as you cut it. The size or shape of these cuts don't matter very much as you can trim them down later once your trap is near complete. Then line up the holes of these milk jugs like so and use duct tape to hold them together securely. Next, you can grab your window screen and fold the top corners down the midline until they meet evenly. Next, you can cut the tip off of the top, right as seen here, forming a half circle cut on top of the screen. It's best to start small with this cut and keep making it larger until it fits around the cir circumference of the milk jug hole. Once you're happy with the size of the cut, you can attach it to the inside of the jug top. 
this would be easiest with a hot glue gun, but I don't have one, so I stapled it, which proved to be a little tricky, but still doable. You want to take your time placing and stapling each section of the screen one piece at a time to the jug so that you ensure that there's enough screen to fit around the entire circumference, making sure that there's no areas for the spotted lanternflies to escape. Next, you want to get your longer piece of wood. For this, I just used a ruler and that worked totally fine for me. This is going to provide some structure to the screen to hold it against the tree. So all you really need to do is staple it along the screen on the side that is opposite the opening we just created. While you're doing this, you also want to fold down that side of the milk jug, jug top so that it can lay flat with this piece of wood against the tree. Next, get your smaller piece of wood. I had to get a little desperate here as I just used a piece of cardboard that I cut, but it honestly worked just fine. This is mainly just to ensure that the seam of the screen is completely sealed so no spotted lantern flies can get out. So all you need to do is staple it securely along the seam um, made between both sides of the screen. Now you want to get some type of sturdy but bendable wire to help prop the trap open against the tree. This is another instance of getting pretty creative for me as I just cut off a section of chicken wire and popped it through the screen. It would be much better to use just regular wire and run it along the seam, fold the screen over it, and staple it to secure it. Lastly, you need to get a gallon Ziploc bag and begin cutting the tip off of it little bits at a time just until you can snugly fit it over the open milk jug top. Once it's over, you can secure it with a zip tie or a rubber band. Now the trap itself is built, it's time to attach it to the tree. To do this, you can just use twine or string to tie it around the tree, right around the union between the two milk jugs to hold it securely. And then you can use push pins or a staple gun to secure the bottom part of the screen to the tree. This is really important to ensure that the spotted lantern flies can't just crawl under the screen. Try and attach it in as few places as possible to try and limit the damage to the tree. Now your circle trap is successfully on your infested tree and spotted lantern fly nymphs will begin climbing up the net through the milk jug tops and into the Ziploc bag where they can't escape. Keep an eye on the bag because you will need to change it out as it gets full. When doing this, you can add alcohol to the full bag to ensure that all of them are dead, dispose of it, and then replace it with a brand new Ziploc bag. If you are in a county that currently has spotted lantern flies, you can do your part to help stop their spread and mitigate their damage by applying tree bands or circle traps to your trees to help catch the nymphs. Doing this will not only help quarantine efforts, it will also protect the trees on your property that they're currently feeding on. For more information on the spotted lanternfly, you can visit our website and read our fact sheets for agricultural producers and contractors. Contact us with questions at slf at buckscd.org and visit Penn State's Extension website to learn even more about this invasive insect. Next week, we're going to look at container gardening as a great option to grow your own food with limited outdoor space. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I can't wait to see you in the next one.